get this money from money And ovation family, what is up? How you guys doing today? It's me, Brandon, your friend, your neighbor, your host. Back with another video for Innovation Property Atlanta. It's here talking about the tarot game, car rental game, side hustles, ways you all can make, save money together. Before we jump to today's quick reaction video, guys, remember as always, remember to like my video if you guys don't mind. Subscribe to my channel as we're on a roll to 1,000 subscribers, currently at 820. So thanks to you all for all the love. Hit the notification button so you guys are notified when I drop out new videos and new content. And then we'll definitely go from there, you guys. Today's reaction video is going to be number two from my guy, Lucky Lopez, out of Las Vegas. It's going to be talking about uh, ride share and do's and don'ts of ride share and delivery and everything as far as the side hustle when it comes to ride share. So I'm guessing he's probably talking about Uber, DoorDash, but you can also include Turo in there also. That's also a form of ride share too. So let's see what he's talking about and uh, we'll comment while he's uh talking or i'll give some insight towards the end of the video but let me go ahead and present lucky and let's show up uh lucky some love maximize that screen let's see what my guy's talking about the video for you guys we'll be giving you an update on how banks are cracking down on ride share apps as well as delivery apps but first let me tell you a quick story now, the other day I decided to order Postmates and I got that notification saying that my delivery driver was outside to come pick up my food. As I walked outside, I didn't see the Hyundai Sonata that was supposed to be for my delivery driver. So I messaged him, said, hey, I don't see your car. Are you in the right neighborhood? He's like, oh, I'm in a black Mercedes S-Class. So I look to my left, he's parked in front of my neighbor's house. I wave him down, he pulls up and gives me my food and he notices my smart car starts talking you know and so i noticed the temp tag and i asked him did you just buy this car and he's like yeah i just bought it it's my dream car i always wanted one for me it's a big uh thing you know my family in our country uh s class was a status of wealth successfulness and i always wanted to get one so i'm finally able to get one right and i asked him i was like oh do you do postmates part-time do you do something else he's like no i do postmates pretty much full-time every day all day and I was like, well, that's great. I was like, is it doing really well? We were able to buy another car and still be able to deliver and make some money. And he said, oh, I, I traded in my Sonata for this Mercedes, so I don't even have that anymore. So he's basically using his Mercedes as his Uber Eats and Postmates delivery vehicle. And I kind of scratched my head a little bit and I was like, well, are you gonna start doing uh, Uber Black? Because I know a lot of people do that here in Vegas because it's actually really good money. He said, no, he doesn't want to do any of that. He just wants to deliver food while his you know, wife and everything's at work. And then he can come home and spend time with his family. Seemed like a very nice guy. I think he's probably around maybe 25, 26 years old. So as he drove away, I just thought to myself, you know, should I be very excited that he bought his dream car or should I be absolutely horrified that somebody gave this guy a loan? Whoa, he had a newer S class. Okay, okay. People are getting loans for cars that they have no business even getting. Now, like I said, the guy was a nice guy and he was very clever too. He flat out told me that he knew the banks would not actually give him a loan on this car. And he did one of the things that I actually talked about on this channel was you put your uh, Uber or whatever funding in a separate bank account and then you write checks from that account to yourself and show it as a monthly or weekly paycheck. And that's exactly what this gentleman did. And that's how he was able to get the financing for his car. Because for the last two years, banks have been really cracking down when it comes to this type of lending. So when a bank gives a regular person a loan, they kind of already have the matrix figured out. They know that the average person is gonna drive anywhere from three to 12 thousand miles they're going to use it for x amount of years trade it in and so based on this particular type of risk and use they'll give you maybe a 64 to maybe 84 month payment single digit interest low down payment because there's not a lot of wear and tear on the vehicle and you're using it for your personal use nothing commercial and that's why everybody gets these types of loans but now banks are realizing after losing millions of dollars every single quarter because they noticed that when they get a repo and the car had maybe 10,000 miles when they bought it, 
and they pick it up a year and a half later. Now it's got 100,000 miles. They know they're using this for either delivery or ride share, some sort of commercial use. Now, for the last six years, they've been kind of letting it slide, not really worrying because it wasn't that big of a deal. But during the pandemic, a lot of people, when they lost their jobs, or their jobs closed down, turned to Uber, Postmates, and other delivery apps to make some extra money. And this is where it basically exploded. Now you see millions of people all across the United States jumping into either ride shares or delivery and putting lots of miles on their car. Now, why is this so significant now? Well, every time a car breaks down, falls apart, they got too many miles, a lot of these people owe all this money to it, they just walk away. So when the bank repos it, takes it back to the auction and sees that this car maybe has a $30,000 loan, but with 150,000 miles, now it's worth maybe $8,000, they take a massive loss when it comes to the loan. So now the banks are pretty much fed up with it. So about a year and a half ago, they started putting in their underwriting. If you're using this car for any type of commercial use, we have the rights to repo the car. Now, a lot of leasing companies took advantage of this because there's different laws in different states that allow them to snatch up their cars. One of my favorite companies, Luxury Lease Partners, flat out tell people, if you use our cars for Turo, ride shares, even picking up groceries that you're not supposed to, they will snatch up your car. Now, when I put up the video about a year ago, it hit a lot of buzz. It was all over the news. It popped up on a lot of uh, different Reddit forums. If you're an Uber driver or you're doing Lyft or Turo or something, Thing like that they were all talking about it and they said that there's no way it's not legal i'm here to tell you that it's 100 legal and they're able to push this through so for the last year and a half banks have been literally pushing in their underwriting if they use it for commercial use we have the right to repo it now everybody thinks that oh well what is if i use my car for like you know i'm a construction worker and i put my tools in it and you're going to work that's work that's not really what it's intended for it's for the people that are using it for turo hire car delivery or ride share that's really their biggest worry because that's where they see the major flaws and then on top of that what's happening also are people don't have the correct insurance so people are driving around these Turo cars and they crash them and they have to fight with Turo to get paid. The bank doesn't get paid, it has to fight with Turo to get it. They don't like that. Also, when it comes to Uber, some states, if you don't have correct commercial insurance and a license, your insurance company will not cover your car. So if you crash it, now the insurance company is, the other person is suing you, the bank is suing you because now they can't get paid and it's just bad all the way around. And the banks have basically had enough. They don't want to lose any more money because even with regular people, they're defaulting, they're late, delinquencies and deficiencies are at all time high. Banks have nothing left to do but to try to figure out how do they protect their collateral. So how does this affect everybody that's doing ride shares today? Now, I told people you should probably talk to your bank and see. A lot of people don't want to because they think if they tell, they'll be told you're not supposed to do it. And now they'll be looking for it or refinance with another bank and get a commercial loan. Now, the big differences between a loan for regular person, and a commercial loan are a few things. One, a commercial loan is designed for you to outrun deficiencies or outrun depreciation. It's gonna be a much shorter term with a bigger down payment, higher interest. That's just the way it is. Commercial banks know that you're gonna be using this to make money and put a lot of miles on it. So they wanna offset that risk and offset that default or depreciation by giving you, once again, shorter term, bigger payments, higher interest. So if you're paying it down every you know two years and you can trade it in, you'll never be upside down, you won't fail, your business can keep running. That's the way we run our rental car businesses because a lot of the people that are dying now, remember all these Turo gurus all online? I remember when I first started, there was probably about 30, 40 channels that were just like mine that only did Turo. Now they're all trying to do the exact same we're doing is talking about the car market. But they were all like, oh, I'm making millions of dollars off of Turo and you could be a Turo millionaire too. Where are all those clowns? They're gone because they went bankrupt. They did exactly what I said. They got an 84 month loan at single digit interest rate and they paid the very minimum. They didn't pay for depreciation, maintenance or pay down, none of that. They paid the very minimum and they robbed a piggy bank for the last two years. And what happened? Now the cars are beat up, too many miles. They can't rent them for the same amount of money they used to. So now they're stuck with all these cars they can't get. So what happens? They file bankruptcy, they lose all these cars. And this is where the rental car automation clowns came out of. They realized that if they buy cars and use them for you know rentals or whatever else, they can't make any real money themselves because in two years they burn out and they lose everything. So now they tell you to buy a car and they rent it for you, get 50% of the profit with none of the liability that you have with buying these cars. That's why I tell people commercial loans and regular loans 
are two completely separate animals. But the commercial loan, if you do it correctly, will help set you up for success, but it'll also let you know that if your business model is incorrect, because I used to love telling rental car companies that, you know, you need to have this, this, and this, you know, to be legit. And they're like, well, we'll never survive. We're not making enough money. I'm like, then that means you're not charging enough money or you're not running your business correctly. And that's the problem we keep falling into. So if you're still looking at doing maybe Uber Eats or Turo or Postmates or whatever type of delivery or rideshare app you want to do, you need to sit down and talk to an actual banker. Don't go out and try to skate behind it or go underneath it because I'm telling you, banks are going to start snatching up cars very, very quickly. They've already kind of ramped up because of the actual uh, auto loan crisis and how they're going after all these repos. And they'd rather get a car, especially that they know that is brand new, that doesn't have a lot of miles. They'd rather repo it sooner than later because they know that you're gonna be beating the hell out of it, racking up a bunch of miles. So they're gonna snatch it up now. So you need to be aware of this. So a lot of these third-party rental companies are actually doing rentals for ride shares or delivery deliveries if you remember about a month ago we did a video on hertz talking about how their evs are not going anywhere they're just sitting there and so now they're forced to actually rent them out to people like they're doing uber rideshare or some sort of type of delivery now this is a good thing now you could jump into a brand new ev drive it around do your deliveries do your uh ride shares and make some pretty decent money but not have any of the risk now i know a lot of you guys are like oh but but i'm paying three four hundred dollars a week to use a Tesla, it's too much money and blah, blah, blah. I'll put it this way. $400 a week is cheaper than you going out and getting commercial insurance with a commercial loan and buying a brand new car. And then on top of that, in two years or even six months, if you hate doing you know, ride shares or you hate doing deliveries, you can just give back that car and walk away. What about the millions of Americans that realize that they don't like Turo, they don't like Uber, they don't but like Lyft, they don't like Postmates, Uber Eats, and all these other crazy apps. What do they do when they buy all these cars or a single car just to use for these applications? They're screwed. They can't walk away from it. Where at least with this, they can give you the aspect of doing this. Now, if let's say after six months or a year, you've been renting from Hertz or one of these rental car companies, and you're like, you know what? I really like, you know, uh, doing rideshare. I like talking to people as I'm dropping them off to work. I like, you know, hanging out and driving around my car is my office. That's fine. Then go out, make the conscious business decision to get a license, go get your actual commercial policy, go get your commercial auto loan and go get whatever car you want. That's a good thing. But at least you can test it before you go crazy and get yourselves into debt. Now, there are tons of companies all across the United States that do third party rentals when it comes to either ride shares or delivery apps. I highly recommend trying them first before getting yourself into debt or even worse, risk buying a car and getting it taken away from you because I never want anybody to lose their livelihood. Even though we talk a lot of shit and we have fun on this channel, at the end of the day, everybody needs to make money to pay their bills and to feed their family. And once again, I don't wanna see anybody lose their car because they didn't read the fine print in their auto loans. So it's very important. If you wanna call your bank, I recommend you do that. I know a lot of you guys won't. Or if you know of a bank that will do commercial loans, I'm trying to remember a few of the names of the ones that do, I just don't remember off the top of my head, but you could talk to a few of them and they'll let you know that if they do ride share or if it's okay, or if they have any issues, a lot of small local credit unions don't really have the underwriting department to do that. So they don't care if you want to try to refinance with them. But once again, like I said, I don't want to see anybody lose cars. And on another note, you should never buy a car that costs more than what you make annually. What I mean by this is if you make $50,000 a year, you should never buy a car over that. You should be looking at cars $49,000 and below. The last three years, I don't know what it is, stupidity has run rampant. I've never seen so many people making $40,000 a year driving $85,000 cars. It's just ridiculous, it's stupid. Even the guy that was driving that Mercedes that delivered my food the other day, I wish him nothing but the best, but I don't know why he would want to put himself that far into debt with doing postmates. Because remember, every mile you drive um, basically hits for depreciation and maintenance. That thing's going to be a nightmare in like 12 months if he's really doing a lot of deliveries to make sure he makes enough money to pay his insurance and his car payment.
But anyways, I would love to know your guys' opinions in the comment section below. Are you currently doing ride shares? What are your opinions of it? Do you have any problems? Are banks already calling you? Is your insurance gone up? If you're doing deliveries, Postmates, Amazon deliveries, what kind of things have you guys seen in your market? Also, if you have any friends that make $40,000 a year that bought an $85,000 car, make sure you tag them in the comment section below as well, just to have some fun with them. I'd love to hear some of the stories. And once again, I'd love to thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, guys. That is my dog, Lucky Lopez, out of Las Vegas. Let me pause it. So uh, my commentary or feedback is he is correct. Uh, we are in times now where money is flowing. Uh, when people just want to overspend on cars. That's a prime example. I would never buy an S-Class to do Uber Eats or DoorDash or any type of uh, ride share besides rental car business. But, hey, each his own. So thanks again to Lucky Lopez for his input. Um, always, you know, good reviewing his videos, getting his input. So you guys have a good rest of your evening. Take it easy.